Uh, we will start our first talk uh, by uh, Dr. Manavi A. Sindal. Uh, she is a head and clinical retina and training with retinal services, Arvind Eye Hospital and Postgraduate Institute of Ophthalmology, Pondicherry. She will be talking about basics in macular surgery. Thank you, Dr. Kalpita, for the introduction. And uh, it's indeed a pleasure to be here today, and I would be sharing some basics in macular surgery. So as we have seen, there have been a lot of advances in macular imaging, a lot of advances in instrumentation, and these put together have changed the whole scenario of macular surgery, and our outcomes are very good, like just now was it in, in mentioned that more than 90% success rate in the macular hole closure. I will be covering this talk under these few headings. So the first step that is vital for macular hole success in surgery is induction of posterior vitreous detachment. We may be lucky to have an occasional case where there is a pre-existing PVD making our job much easier by just having to clear out the vitreous, but this is quite an unusual scenario in the case of macular hole. So what are the tips and tricks to induce a PVD? One is the simplest, you could just change over to your macular lens for viewing and under high magnification induce the posterior vitreous detachment. By doing so, you can very easily visualize the vices ring and the PVD as it comes up. By aiding visualization, just high magnification can be sufficient. And of course, other than this, the commonly used method of visualizing the vitreous is by using triamcinolone acetonide to stain the vitreous. These crystals which stick to the vitreous make it very easily visible and make the induction of posterior vitreous detachment more easy. Of course, uh, triamcinolone is also used to stain the vitreous to ensure complete removal of the vitreous, even in scenarios like anterior vitrectomy or when dealing with surgeries, in, especially in pediatric eyes. And here you can see the IVTS stained vitreous easily detaches and comes off. And by the easy visualization, we can also see the hyaloid coming up very easily. Sometimes this IVTA crystals, especially in macular holes, can get deposited within the hole and this can be quite unpleasant. And therefore, you can also use BBG, the dye which you use for uh, peeling the ILM itself to stain the vitreous. While the dye doesn't cling as much to the hyaloid as IVTA does, it does uh, stain the vitreous sufficiently to make it more visible than the natural translucent vitreous and thereby makes PVD induction easier. Of course, care has to be taken during induction of posterior vitreous detachment and taking it to the periphery because the vitreous can be adherent in areas of the periphery and there is a risk of iatrogenic breaks also been forming. We can uh, be tactful and limit the uh, in, uh, PVD induction in areas where the hyaloid seems to be more adherent to the retina. The next part is staining of the membranes. Uh, the use of dyes in vitreous surgery is called chromovitrectomy and vital dyes stain living cells. We commonly use uh, trypan blue to stain epiretinal membranes. Internal limiting membrane has been stained by indocyanin green and infracyanin blue green, but commonly used nowadays, especially in India, is brilliant blue and triamcinolone for the vitreous as we just saw. So where are, what are the various techniques in which the staining can be done and how the various membranes can be visualized in the eye? Trypan blue is used for staining the external limiting, uh, for staining the uh, epiretinal membrane. And we have to remember that this has to be used either to stain under air or by making the dye heavy because otherwise it can stain the posterior capsule and hamper our view for the further steps of the surgery. Here I'm using heavy trypan blue to stain the epiretinal membrane in this particular case. For the staining of the internal limiting membrane, There, there you can see the epiretinal membrane stained by the uh, trypan blue. BBG is used commonly for staining the internal limiting membrane. BBG can be used directly under fluid itself, and that is the way I commonly use it. I just switch off my infusion to prevent turbulence in the eye and too much of mixing of the dye, and I leave a contact time of just a few seconds. So this is what I go in, I inject the dye, I come out, I take my extrusion, and I go in and I clear out the dye. And this short period of contact with BBG itself is sufficient to cause a sufficient enough staining of the ILM, as you can see here, uh, to uh, facilitate peeling. Of course, the staining can also be done by making the uh, Brilliant Blue heavy. Therein, you take 1.5 cc of the dye and mix it with 0.5% of 0.5 cc of 10% dextrose. This heavier dye settles over the posterior pole. It allows the dye to be more in contact with the ILM and thereby makes the staining more intenser and uh, darker. By doing a staining, which and also the dye can be left in situ for about a minute or two. 
The other way that Brilliant Blue can be used is by staining under air, as you can see over here. Uh, both these methods of either making it heavy or staining under the air and leaving it for some time cause a more darker staining of the ILM and also kind of slightly dehydrate the ILM. This makes peeling a little easier. So novice surgeons are better off using this method of staining before moving on to staining under fluid for a few seconds alone. Coming to internal limiting membrane peeling, which is a vital step in macular hole surgeries as we have already seen in our previous talks, the most common way that we initiate this peel is by the pinch and peel technique, wherein we go and give a very superficial pinch to the uh, superficial layers of the retina to get a layer of the internal limiting membrane up, and then thereby proceed by peeling this membrane. Uh, the new shark skin forcep introduced by Alcon actually makes this even more easier and traumatic. We should remember that as we peel the ILM, we should grasp it near the base and keep lifting the flap further. The initiation of the ILM peel can also be done by a Thanos diamond dusted forcep uh, scraper to initiate the peel. And then this edge of ILM that you get can be further lifted and the peel can be extended by the ILM forceps. And the finesse loop, which is a very nice instrument, very automatic, again, very good for initiating a peel and very, very great, again, to be used in beginner surgeon's hand as it gives a very automatic peel. Also very good to initiate the peel in eyes which have a sticky ILM or when you need to peel it in eyes with a retinal detachment. Coming to further details, when you, after you have initiated a flap of ILM for the peel and you're peeling further with the forceps, um, most common consensus about the extent of peel ranges to arcade to arcade, about two disc diameter around the uh, macular hole. And like I was mentioning that this peel, uh, once you have lifted the flap, you should keep grasping it near the base of the flap, not exactly at the base, because if you go too close, you are again at the risk of pinching the retina, and not too away, because if you keep tearing your membrane, you again need to keep lifting a new flap to complete your entire peel. And the final step, especially in macular hole surgeries, is gas tamponade. A good fluid air exchange is very essential and removal of all the remnants of the fluid from the posterior pole and drying of the posterior pole completely is vital. Following a good fluid air exchange, the, uh, we use tamponade in the form of 20% uh, SF6 most commonly or sometimes you can also use C3F8 for in, in the non-expansile concentration for tamponade. Positioning, which is the final point, uh, the opinion on this varies, and I think further speakers will be speaking in more details, but the first initial 24 hours are the most crucial for positioning. To conclude, with the, uh, good surgical techniques, we can have good closure of macular holes and good outcomes. I would like to acknowledge my fellows uh, who monitored my videos recording and Dr. Shivaraj who edited these videos for me and my instrument team and my counselors who gave, uh, helped me in recording and the counselors who allotted these macular hole surgeries to me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manavi, for the beautiful videos and the learning steps of uh, basic macular hole surgeries.